Welcome back everyone to a new playlist in this channel and this playlist is about Kotlin coroutines uh, we'll be explaining what Kotlin coroutines are why we need them and how we can use them so first of all what are coroutines coroutines are a Kotlin future so they come from uh, the Kotlin language they're not from the Android framework or Java they come from Kotlin so they are a Kotlin future for asynchronous programming which is executing tasks uh, pieces of code without effects in our main thread and they make it easy to perform those long-term uh, tasks like like loading a database or an API things like complex uh, calculations that take too long time we need coroutines for that to not affect our main thread but what is a thread first so imagine a thread as an environment or a context where our pieces of tasks or pieces of code execute so imagine these are lines of code and these pieces of code in our thread execute one uh, by one so we can execute two tasks at a time so we'll do this task and then this one and then this one and then this one if for example the third task takes too long time too much time then the fourth task will have to wait until the third task uh, is finished so this is uh, a thread and uh, basically in, in programming that's what we always do when we create a function and then we keep writing line by line then those lines are just in, in a thread and they execute uh, in a sequence like this and uh, we can of course start a new thread so like this uh, of course we can start a new thread and we can have more than just one thread or two we can have as many threads as we want and of course tasks that execute in the second thread have nothing to do with the other tasks in the first thread so for example we can finish the first thread the first task in here but we haven't even finished it here and we can now already finish the fifth thread the fifth task here and we're still in the second task here so they are independent on, of each other so these are threads basically and we need thread for multitasking, executing different tasks in one time. Like uh, if these tasks are heavy and they take time, uh, we want them in a, in a different thread or in different threads. If we want to put each one in a thread without affecting our main thread, because this one is our main thread and they can write it right here. This is our main thread where our UI executes. So uh, if we want to have a progress bar or something, that loads or scroll or something that all of that executes right here and of course when we have a progress bar a progress bar right here then it is of course spinning and if this task is loading a database that will take time then this will block the progress bar and there will be lag in our app and it will have to wait until the second task is finished for then the progress bar can start spinning again which is uh, which is what we don't want and then we can bring the second task for example and execute it in the other thread so we don't actually execute the second task right here and but we execute it in the second thread to not affect our ui or our progress bar that is spinning so this is why we need to have more than a thread so you might ask if we already have threads like this why do we need coroutines uh, and what are coroutines in a way? So coroutines do the same thing as threads. They just there for uh, asynchronous programming to execute tasks without affecting our main thread. But why do we need them? Basically, coroutines are just like thread. They execute uh, a sequence of uh, pieces of code like this, but they are much lighter than a thread. And actually, we launch coroutines inside a, a thread. So here is the example, here we have a thread, we can imagine this as the main thread where our UI of, of course uh, executes as well and inside that thread we have coroutines as you can see and these tasks that run inside these coroutines do not affect or block this sequence of tasks that we have in our main thread so if we have these UI updates for example then this does not block this, this sequence so these will keep executing no matter what these do so these are coroutines they are there to execute tasks that might take time so this might be calling an api call this might be doing a complex calculation or or uh, getting some data from a database that will take time and we can do them inside coroutines to not affect our sequence of, of uh, tasks that we have in our main thread 
and then when we when we get this data from this uh, coroutine i mean from this task we can then display in our ui and everything will look very smooth and uh, seamless without of course blocking or affecting our uh, thread where our ui uh, updates and executes and these coroutines are independent of course of each other so we can have two coroutines at a time and uh, to make it more more obvious let me just adjust this so as you can see in this other example uh, if we for example need a user click which is this one so user clicks on a button and then we need to get some data that we need to display later and uh, to get that later data we might get it from an api or a database or from both of them and as you can see we can run both tasks that's in a different coroutines in, in one time so this coroutine does not affect this one or this one does not wait for this one they are independent of each other and they both don't block the sequence of tasks that we already have in our main thread and these coroutines are suspendable so we can pause them and uh, resume them when we want so if we want to pause the execution in uh, of a, a coroutine till we have something and we can do that basically unlike threads so threads can't be can't be paused and then resumed again and another thing about coroutines they can change their context or their environment as i first said a, a context here is the thread where these tasks and this coroutine execute and since coroutines can actually change their their uh, context we can actually take this coroutine and put it in a different thread just like this so we can just take it right here and bring it to the other thread like this so they can change their context very easily and an example of where we would need these coroutines uh, is let's imagine we are building a weather app and uh, we need to fetch weather data from a remote server without coroutines fetching that data will freeze our app while waiting to the server to respond so coroutines will handle that by actually making the respond inside a coroutine inside of just making it uh, right here uh, to not freeze our app while waiting for that data to arrive so yes this is it now we, we understand what coroutines are and why we need them so they are just uh, little workers you could imagine them inside this uh, big context where they execute so they are little workers that do tasks and we can have many of them we can pause them we can change where they are from a thread to another and uh, they are lightweight as i said they don't take uh, as much memory as a thread we can have a thousand coroutine and the app would still run fine but if we have a thousand thread then our app maybe would just run out of memory uh, and just crash so uh, this is it now for this video in the second part we will uh, then write our first coroutine and we'll see how we can start it and and see where they run or the context of them so as always don't forget to follow me on instagram see you in the next video and bye